Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello. Hello, hello, hello there. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Thanks for coming back after a a brief unplanned and, quite frankly, uh, less than desirable reason for my absence. Um, For those of you that uh, don't follow me on my socials, Um, The reason why there wasn't an episode last week was because I had to travel to New York, where I'm from, um, due to my father's death. And uh, my wife and I took off um, the day that it happened. Um, But so if you you aren't familiar, I'll I'll just kind of, you know, if you're not following me on my my socials and you don't know, um, he he passed away on Sunday, um, April 16th. he was battling a, a, a very aggressive form of skin cancer for over a decade. And um, it finally, as was expected it would, um, was the thing that, uh, that, that took his, his physical life. Um, and I'm not going to go into much more details other than that, um, but that's you know why... I wasn't able to release an episode last week. My wife and I traveled from Tennessee to New York to be near family um, and to address any things that may need to be done from the family side of things. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, it's been a it's been a it's been a wild week and a half, uh, to say the least. You know when. When I got the word that um, really I kind of knew in you know about a week or so in advance of, of, of things to some degree um, of, of his rapid decline, you know this was and it's and it's a touchy subject and again I don't want to take up the podcast talking about this, but you know this is something like I said he'd been battling for and dealing with for for over a decade and um, it was kind of one of those things where you know it was hard to determine when. Um, some days were really, really bad. Some days were not so bad. Um, so it was really hard to determine when he would pass. And so being this far away from Tennessee to New York, um, you know, uh, amongst some other things that I won't go into, uh, it was difficult for me to figure out when I should be there. But, um, as soon as I was able to, you know, really understand the, the state of affairs, you know, I, um, made made uh made a trip up there to try and see him before he 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 died you know when when i got notice of of things being pretty bad it was uh it was the day that he passed and i didn't make it to him in time um before he did die and uh but when i got to new york with my wife um i learned a lot i learned a lot while i was there and I wanted to talk about um, sort of a subject or, or, or a topic that I think fits stuff like this and, and other things like this, you know. Um, so once again, uh, thanks again for, for, for being here and, and tuning in and, and continuing to support. I know while I was away, the presence that I had on social media was next to nothing. Understandably so, right? I know everybody that supports and follows what I do understood that um, I wouldn't be making any content um, while I was up dealing with those things. Um, but, uh, you know, so today, uh, today at the time of this recording, I, I have just returned back to Tennessee. Um, so we'd been up there for, you know, a week and a couple of days to just be nearby um, and, and, and tend to some things that I wanted to tend to, um, personally, 
to kind of work through the process of, of, of what had happened. And uh, some of which, you know, involved me being out in nature near a really, really pretty um, wildlife um, park reserve um, nearby. It's called Winding Hills. It's in, uh, I guess it's considered Montgomery, New York. And there, you know, got to drum by the water there and just tend to do, to do things that, I, that you know, for me tend to be very healing and very, um, you know, focus on the, the, the spiritual healing that's required for, for things that, like this, you know, a family member passing. Um, but, but what really kind of struck me, um, about the whole visit and about the whole trip there and back again was a topic that, um, you know, I've, I've talked about on this podcast and on the YouTube channel and across my other social media platforms before where, where the, uh, the concept of Inengard and Utengard, the inner yard, the inner enclosure and the outer enclosure and what these concepts for heathens you know mean um and while the the words themselves may not necessarily be part of the vocabulary or or words that we see in you know old norse texts or things that might be found in let's say other uh, sagas or the lore or anything like that, the concept of what is within versus what is without, you know, uh, that, that concept is evident in many of the stories, many of the sagas. Um, and, we, and we see and we, and we know that at least from the Germanic tribes that, that predate Christianity becoming prevalent in the region, or regions, that the concept of the inner yard and the outer yard or the inner circle, outer circle, inner outer, right? The, these these are very prevalent concepts that that existed across um, the, the, these these regions, and because of that, you know, it, it had has transferred into how modern heathens view and perceive the world, um, or at least in many cases, our worldviews become uh, a part of this this concept you know we, we we perceive the world as what is within is what we protect and what is without is is outside of the purview of the tribe of of, of the kindred of, of the group you know and and also that which is within what we count as our inner guard our, our inner yard our inner circle is sacred and we protect that um, and we safeguard that um, even to the point of um, gatekeeping, you know, um, and this is a touchy, this is, this is a, is a topic that, that gets some people's, you know, feathers ruffled. When I say things like gatekeeping, it, a lot of people just automatically, um, lean towards, uh, gatekeeping under the context of preventing people who are not of Northern European descent or, um, who are not Germanic or who don't have any sort of ancestral ties to this part of the world you know, keeping them away from these practices, from these beliefs. Um, and that's not what I'm referring to when I say gatekeeping. Um, what, I, what I'm referring to is um, preserving and, and protecting the inner yard, the, the things that happen within the sanctity, within the sovereignty of that enclosure, protecting that from the, the wild, from that which is without, that, that which is with. Uh, you know, outside of our purview of, of dealings, you know. So gatekeeping to the sense or in the, in the context of uh, preventing that which is without, that is not um, part of that inner construct to, to, to breach those gates, you know. And I've lived that very vividly. I've lived that concept very vividly um, within the last week and a half. And it, and it caused me to kind of ponder and meditate this concept with regards to how it's applied within modern heathenry. And as I've mentioned on this podcast and across my channel multiple times, you know, this, this, this content that I release is, is, is kind of my 
you know, take on things. This is this is largely just the ideas that come through my head that I want to share with people, um, and and maybe plant some seeds, food for thought, you know, fat to chew on, as it were. Give you some, give you some things to discuss amongst yourselves, perhaps if you have a group or a collective that you are a part of, and and see if it fits, right. Um, I'm not trying to be the one that tells you that this is how you have to heathen, this is how you should be in order to be a good heathen or a, uh, a prosperous heathen or, or anything like that. This is just my view, one person, one heathen, one chieftain's view um, who, who serves his tribe um, in this capacity and, and is, is willing to share certain things that don't uh, leak uh, anything into what is sacred for us within. So... We all, for we, I think, for, for a lot of the listeners, for a lot of the viewers, you know, th- this concept, like I said, of of in and guard, out and guard, inner outer, is not foreign. We understand, we know what those things are. Um, I'll put some links down in the description and show notes of the podcast for you listeners to, if you want to go back and, and refer to. Um, but it, this is probably something that, that, especially for some of the seasoned heathens, um, for for those that have been doing this a little while. Um, and maybe even those that are somewhat new have, have, have definitely heard. But for the veterans, you know, for the, for the folks that have been doing this for a while, um, what I'm talking about is, is not foreign, and you get it. Um, but I go back to so much of what I go back to when it comes to practicing heathenry, old ways heathenry, I mean, in modern times, is the what is our purpose behind what we do? And when I say we... Um, you could you can use the the that as as a term to describe the larger heathen communities, all right, across the world, across this, the, the, our country here in the United States, but maybe even across the world. But why do we do what we do? What is the purpose behind what we do? We should be purpose driven. I believe that 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 the, the we we benefit better from understanding the why. If we're just going through the motions because, you know, so-and-so said it in a, in a, in a piece of source material that, that dates back, you know, over a thousand years ago, um, and we don't really have any practical or, or, or you know, hands-on, boots-on-the-ground sort of examples of it working in modern times now, and if all we're doing is just trying to relive something from, a, from the past that worked back then but doesn't work now for certain reasons, whether it be social Constructs are different, um, customs are different, traditions, you know, the way that the world was at a time, um, you know, it worked back then, but it doesn't work now. And, and again, the reasons why, why do we do what we do, the purpose behind what we do. I think that Inengard and Utengard get get brought into the mix of things to do just because, well, that's how the ancient Germanic people uh, viewed the world. And, and they, they had a very clear defining, you know, the barriers between the inner and the outer were were unequivocally set. You know, people knew what was uh, good, that which was good was what was within, and that which was not good, that which was, you know, you can maybe use the word evil, but that which was uh, against the benefit of the inner guard of the tribe was without. You know, so again, the, we... we we have examples, I think, a lot of times of people that, that, that go back to the archaic, maybe, or ancient views of the world and, and, and apply it in a modern setting without understanding the purpose or the reasons why. So why do we have these things? Why is Inengard and Utengard such a big thing amongst heathens especially? Why is the inner circle, the outer inner yard, outer yard, why is that such a big deal? Um, what is within and I'm going to just touch upon it briefly. I, th- I think I've talked about this on other podcasts before, but what is within, what is what is part of the inner is lawful. There is order, okay? There is there, there are customs, there are traditions, there are things that happen within that have been set for the betterment, for the good, okay? For the growth of those who function, within. So that's why there are laws. That's why there are customs and traditions across different tribes that don't exactly align with the same thing that, that a neighboring tribe or, a, or, or, or another region did things. That's why we see variances and, and nuances. 
similar things, right? Similar names, close enough uh, things of, of proximity that we can understand. Like, yeah, there, there was a, there was a commonality, but the the happenings of of, of the inner were were developed for the good of that particular group, for that particular tribe, village, clan, whatever, um, that social construct at that time. It wasn't to exclude others from them. It was to establish and set lawfulness and order. And the, the, the people at the time understood and knew that in order for a society to function well, there needed to be those things. Because what happens without, what is Utengard, what is outside of that inner sanctum, of that inner circle, of that inner yard, is lawlessness. It is wild. It is uncontrollable. And the laws that are applicable within do not apply to that which is without. And so it is orderless. It is lawless. It is chaos. Um the, 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 the things that apply to the outside or that work for the outside um, don't have the, the, the same se- semblance of order that, that, ha- that is happening within. And I think we don't, you know, we, we could probably all agree that this type of the barriers being set between inner and outer, you know, it, it didn't happen um, until humankind, mankind, societies started to, to be established where there were villages, tribes separate from each other. And you know, this person wanted to have the rules to be this, that way, uh, you know, X, Y, Z, you know, this is how we do it. And then the, the other group was like, well, I don't, we don't really, we don't really like doing it that way. We're going to do it, you know, the way that ABC is done. So the variances, the nuances, the changes, um, this, you know, became a thing once, Mankind, humanity started to try and um, take control of, of situations and become more orderly and, and, and lawful. Um, the law of the jungle, right? The law of the wild is, you know, you got to fight, you got to scrounge, you got to be, um, you know, tenacious. You have to have all of these things that, you know, the law, to, the, the law of the jungle, the, the, the wild doesn't care um, if you are not feeling good that day, you know, it doesn't care if you broke your foot, um, it's not going to wait, the storm's not going to wait you out in order to heal your broken foot, you know what I mean, it's going to rain, it's going to snow, it's going to storm, it's going to do what it's going to do because that's just, that's the law of the jungle, and so that's the way the wild operates, the animals are going to come to you to to hunt you if, if you're the weak um, part of that equation, and, and there's nothing... There's no law that says otherwise or, or, or makes it different. So the concepts of inner and outer is that we control what is within, we, we safeguard what is within, we, we establish order, customs, traditions, and things that occur within for the betterment of our people, for the betterment of our tribe, for the betterment of us as a collective, right? Whatever that collective is. When we do that, or, or it's done, um, to, 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 to whatever means necessary. If, if something from out, from without threatens the, the sanctity, the sovereignty, the, 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 what we've established is within, if something without threatens that, then we address it. We, we, we put up the wall. We, we, we put up our shields. We, we fight if necessary. We defend, you know, what is sacred and what is within to keep that thing from without, that is potentially trying to infiltrate, to leak in, we're preventing that from happening to stop, you know, what, what we've established as, as order, as law, as what is good for us from being damaged, from being torn apart. That's the why. That's the purpose. Therein lies the reason of inner and outer. Um, at least from an ancient context, I believe, you know, as, as so much as I've been able to learn from my own experiences and from from studies and, and, and such, right? This is the reason why. Again, it wasn't to stop the the person of a different color skin or they were taller or they looked different or they, you know, they didn't have a pointy hat 
uh, or whatever other such silly thing um modern you know people that 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 want to leverage concepts like this to further their bigoted agendas right it's nothing like that um it was simply because hey at the time this is this is our law this is our customs and if you come in and if you approach you either align with our customs you align with what we are doing or you are without and it's as simple as that there is no negotiation there is no let's talk this through um it's very cut and dry it is in or out you are with us or you are against us and there is no middle area uh, there there's no gray area and um i i lived a very vivid experience of that this week and it made me and it made me think you know does that type of approach is is the approach of what i just described where you keep the the walls of your inn and guard guarded protected with a ferocity with a vengeance that some would venture to say is exclusionary exclusionary like you are you're exclusive you 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 have no wiggle room there there there's no compromise does that fit does that apply well for us as as heathens when we are talking about groups of people um and 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 this kind of i think leaks into conversations that that people have had of you know the benefit of, of, of heathenry, looking at heathenry from a tribalism approach, a tribalist approach to versus, like, say, universalist approaches. Um, I'm not going to talk about folkish approaches because folkish to me is, is, is always a, uh, is, is based on racial views and, 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 and looking things from a racial point of view. You know, you're exclusive, you are, you are safeguarding, you are gatekeeping, you are doing all these things for the reasons of racial preservation of keeping uh, your races pure and all this other kind of nonsense that I don't buy into. Um, and it's not just European stuff. I mean, this is, this, this would be saying, I would say the same for, for any other sort of uh, racial folkish ways. Um, that's just my opinion. This is again, just what I believe um, that, 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 that's, that serves no benefit, no good. Um, but if it becomes a thing of, you know, are, uh, are the person's views, are the person uh, or the people, the group, the other opposing group, the opposite group, right, are their views so far separated, so far distant uh, and different from your own views, the tribe's views, the, the group's views, the, kin the kindred's views, are they so far apart that including them, inviting them to your inner circle, infringes upon the sanctity and sovereignty of what is part of your inner guard. And um, I think, again, I think it's a fine line that, that, that we walk as, as people when approaching things in this way, you know, because some would argue that, well, um, and I maybe, maybe argue isn't the right word, but some would uh, debate, right, that uh, the, the, the concept of of this separation of of groups of people, you know, that it's it doesn't do well for the furtherance of a species of, of humanity. You know, you have to be a bit more accepting, especially now in the today's age, uh, today's age, uh, here in the twenty first century, where you know there, there's so much going on with people in their own individual lives, where uh, you know their their beliefs, their their worldviews. Um, are n way more non-traditional than they ever used to be, um, to the to the to the point where, you know, up is down, left is right, um, and 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 so many other variables, you know, where 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 people are happier and and feel more fulfilled when they pursue a life that is non-traditional. They either um, identify as, as a, 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 an opposite gender, or they have no gender to which they identify with, they are happier, they feel more fulfilled when embracing a non-traditional lifestyle, such as that, right? And, and that's just, you know, a very common, very popular example that I'm leaning towards. And, uh, 
you know, when, when, when people want to be selective or and, and exclude people based off of that, that's where I have a problem. You know, you can be protective of your in and guard all you want. And if, and if you're protective of your in and guard to, 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 again, safeguard and preserve the traditions, the laws, the customs, the, the things that have been built for the betterment and the growth and the good of the people a part of your in and guard or part of that in and guard, part of that inner circle, then it doesn't matter who that other person is. It doesn't matter if they're white, black, purple, queer, uh, genderless, they, 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 or, or, or uh, gender fluid, trans, um, any of these other sorts of things. That's none of that matters. It's it's you know it's it's it goes back to the core values of what that in and guard society is built around and what the what the worldviews of those people are. And if, if if for some reason those 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 views um, want to keep those types of people out and they are exclusionary of that, then that's, you know, that's their thing. But who are we to, who are we to, to challenge that? You know, if, 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 a, if a society has been built or I say a society, like it's a big thing, but if a group of people have been built and they've been successful and they've thrived and they've prospered in their way by being a certain way, that's their thew. That's their custom. That's their law. That's their business. It is their hall. It is their call. Shout out Eric Shervin from the Ravens call. Always will give credit where credit is due when it comes to that. Not my hall, not my call. Um, and I've talked about this too on the podcast. I've been a big advocate for that. It sounds poetic. It sounds great. It is, re- it is easy to remember. You can hashtag it. You can make it a thing. You can trend it out if you want. Hashtag not my call, not my hall, not my call. And I've, d- and I've done that before and I've thought of it. And, and I... I I, uh, I violated my own thought process this week by trying to infiltrate someone else's hall, someone else's in and guard. Um, my intent was was with you know nothing but the best intentions. You know, um, I had nothing but the most good interest in my mind, right? But it was not in line with their version of good or, or their views on things. And so my attempt to make a call, you know, um, for, 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 so for someone else's haul, I learned quickly that I was wrong for that. And morals aside, morals, views, worldviews, you know, ethics aside, if it's not your haul, then it's not your call. Now, because we live in the 21st century, and because everybody has a YouTube channel, or everybody can make a podcast, or everybody can post on Twitter or, or Facebook or Instagram and you know voice their opinions, um, we we we've kind of lost touch with that sort of thing. You know, everybody's business is aired out in in some sort of way. My business is aired out. Um, and, and again, one of the big lessons that I learned from going to New York this past week was that uh, stop it. Stop trying to be involved with things that you have no business being involved in. No matter what your intentions might be, no matter the reasons why you think it's a good idea, you know, You may have nothing but the most honest of intentions. I surely did have nothing but the most honest of intentions. Went about it in a way that made it clear that I was out of line. And I had I had the 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 gates shut on me. The gates were kept very vigilant, you know, vigilantly, (laughs) strongly, and um, as well they should be. As much as I disagree, as much as I would have, as much as I stood there. All right, proverbially, as much as I stood there outside those gates, shaking my head, shaking my fists, feeling angry about the outcome. Why won't you let me in, damn it? You know, again, within, feeling those feelings. Don't you see what I'm trying to do? Don't you understand what I'm trying to say? Can't you see? Why can't you? Right? All these things. When we when we come from places like this, when we when we think we know best, having not been a part of that 
inner society, having not been un- involved in that, to whatever degree it is, uh, 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 an inner yard, inner guard. When we when we have no, I don't know, no obligation, no real obligation. We may think we do because of oh, we're my family, they're my blood, right? They're my kin. I should be doing something like this for them because then they'll know how much I care for them, how much I love them. It's about perception, you know? And um, our, our, best, our best intentions are not always seen as, as such. And, and for a lot of folks, I think that uh, when, when stuff what I'm describing loosely, at least, happened for them, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a trigger to put up our defenses or put up their defenses maybe. You know, when they feel like an outsider is trying to breach the walls instead of approaching the walls with uh, the, 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 the ways that they should be approached in order to receive a welcoming entry, then of course the defenses are going to be uh, you know, increased, and it's going to be made very clear that uh, you're not allowed in. You're not allowed here. You're not wanted here. You are not accepted here. Unless or until certain things happen, until you line up with our customs, until you align with our ways, until you change and become what we are, you're outside. You're Utengard. You have no business being here because you are not subject to our laws, and therefore you are not welcome here. So, again, very sim- very very simple way of looking at things, right? From a society, you know, way back in the day, twelve, you know, thousand, twelve hundred years ago, whatever it's been, uh, since we 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 see stuff like that, um, it worked back then. Does it work now? Should it work now? I've literally been thinking about this for the last couple of days after having experienced it. And I'm a bit conflicted myself, you know. I see where some of this has uh, a a potential for for working for good because, you know, when when, when things are being done right, it's it's like, you know, you got to play by the rules. You got to, if you want to join the club, you got to agree to the, to the, terms and conditions, right, of, of, of that agreement. It's like any other sort of contract that, that you enter into. Terms and conditions apply. See store for details. Battery's not included. You know, all those funny messages. But my point being, right, is like uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't sign your name on the dotted line. You don't enter into that kind of contract uh, where there are terms and conditions without first reading the fine print. If you don't, and you sign anyway, then whose fault is it when you violate the terms of that agreement? It's your own fault for not having read and understood the rules, right? So many people that uh, social media is a big, you know, a, a very popular example, I'll say for this, uh, especially on the, on, the, on the Facebook or Meta platform. You know, there's all these private groups and stuff that, that, that people create and join for various reasons. Um, and they see a title of a, of a thing, right, whatever the group's about. Maybe it's a, a social interest or, or, or other sort of topic that they're interested in, and they join it. Uh, they they like, yes, 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 whatever. If there's questions that people ask ahead of time, if, if, if the group that you're trying to join asks questions about, well, why are you joining? What do you think about this, etc.? They'll go through and they'll answer them, but they won't read the fine print necessarily. They won't go through the group rules. And then they'll do something. I've been guilty of this in the past. They'll do something that violates a rule. And they'll get booted, or they'll get put in timeout, or they'll get, you know, punished, as it were. Like it'll, it'll, their their actions cause some sort of corrective action to 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 take place. Their behavior causes corrective action to take place, and then they get upset about well, why'd you do that? Well, didn't you read the rules? You signed this agreement. You you entered into this place, you know, knowing what the rules were, and you broke them. What do you expect? And you're not allowed in until you agree to those rules, right? So again, for for and that's a stretch, right? We're talking about we're talking about societal, 
uh, tribal customs and, and things like that with with actual people face to face encounters. We're talking about that, and now we're talking about you know social media groups that have rules and, and regulations and things. There's some similarities, right? Nuances are are, are a thing, but the, the there are similarities that 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 should be considered. But as I was saying before, like thinking about it a couple of days, you know, does what I'm what I'm talking about does it apply in a practical sense for heathens? Do you think it applies in a practical sense for heathens? I'm, I'm curious to hear what you know what everybody thinks, because as I always do, you know, this is a rambling session of of my thoughts and ideas, and where my mind is at. And here for one of the you know for for uh, not say say the first time. But here, now, on this episode of the Random Heathen, Heathen Ramblings podcast, I'm not 100% set on it being one way or the other. I'm, I'm still kind of trying to reach a conclusion myself. And that's what this episode was intended for. It was to talk through things myself, get your buy-in, right? get your feedback if you're so inclined and you want to want to share because this is how I think we we advance and as and and uh, as we grow or how we grow as 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 people you know um a lot of a lot of groups I've I'm friends with of, of people that are in groups that I'm friends with other neighboring tribes um have a uh, a pretty good approach on on keeping things secular in in the, in the sense that if you're not part of that group, you're not part of that tribe, then you're not a part of certain things that that group does. You know, there's there's luck to be preserved, there are um, things of that nature and 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 that goes back to me as 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 someone who serves in the capacity that I serve my tribe in. You know, that's one of the biggest jobs that I have is is to ensure that our luck is safeguarded and preserved. And to not let people in that could damage that luck, you know, um, it's a big responsibility. It's a, it's a huge um, task to to undertake. So, to 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 what degree does all of this apply? I don't think it should go away. I think it. I think it has. You know, I lean more towards have it, it having a place, but carefully. You know, being being careful to understand the purpose, the reason why, you know, why are you putting up these, these safeguards? Why are you putting up things? Why aren't you just letting anybody and everybody join your group so you can become a big group and have a bigger society, have a bigger, you know, community to, to, to work with, you know, bigger is not always better. The size of, of the, of the group does not reflect the quality, right? So it's quality over quantity is the focus, right? But, um, yeah, so um, introductory or reintroductory episode for this week. Um, not an exceptionally long one, but after having traveled round trip in the last week and a half, you know, well over, I think we probably put, I would say we had to have put, you know, probably 4,000 miles on our vehicle, my wife and I, her vehicle, really, because uh, we used her car to, to go up there. It's the one that's in the best condition for our trip. This is what you got. You got, you got an episode that uh, was recorded on, the, on the, the day that I returned back to, to the land of Tennessee. You know, and that was another... That was another really interesting thing is, you know, I've, I've, I've gone back and forth to New York for a long time, um, decades. You know, I've been, I've been living, in ten- living in Tennessee uh, this year will be 17 years that I've lived here in this state. And I've gone back to, to New York, you know, dozens of times. Every time I left New York to come back to Tennessee, you know, it was always like a bittersweet thing. Like, ah, uh, I... I I'm anxious to get back to where I live, but I also feel this sort of sadness from leaving my home state, you know. This return trip was the first time ever that I've left New York and headed back to Tennessee, and I wasn't sad. 
if anything, I was like, I cannot wait to get back home. I cannot wait to get back to Tennessee. You know? And that sense of home, that sense of where family is, where tribe is, where our people are, you know, doesn't, it, at least for me, you know, it, it no longer is anchored or, uh, you know, pulling towards a geographical location that uh, I was born in, in or, or, or where I was native to, you know, or I am native to, I guess. Is, there was no was. You know, I was born there. I'm a New Yorker. For all intents and purposes, that's that's you know, I, I talk a certain way. I have certain mannerisms that that don't align with Southern tradition. So I'm a Northman. I'm literally a Northerner. I'm I'm from a Northern state in our country, a Northern region. But uh, I I I walked in rivers up there. Uh, I put my bare feet on the ground up there. I drummed near the waters to, to heal and, and, and do all the things like I alluded to earlier for the reasons that I alluded to or talked about my father's death. And there was some healing that took place. There, were, there, were, there was definitely things that needed to happen that did happen while I was there. Um, but it doesn't have the same sense of feeling like home that, that Tennessee does anymore. Like my people are here. My family is here in Tennessee. My blood kin are still in New York. You know, and if there's anybody that is my blood kin that watches this, my family is in Tennessee. And that can change. Sure, sure it can change. Things can happen. And I hope things do happen that need to happen. I hope that there are changes that take place for the good of our respective inner guards, our respective inner yards, our respective inner sanctums, our, our circles, our people. And that's all I ever want for anybody, you know what I mean? Like I want, I want good to happen for people that is their good, what is good for them, as long as it doesn't harm anybody else, so long as it doesn't put uh, other people in, in, in harm's way or hurt other people, you know, if it doesn't so closely or exactly line up with my worldviews, my ethics, my morals, as long as it's not hurting anybody else, then I hope it happens for you. I hope the things that you need to be successful, prosperous, f life fulfilling that are good for you, that happen for you. Again, so long as nobody else is hurt. And I wish that for all. Um, so think about this, guys and gals. I want, I want to hear your feedback. Um, you can call into the podcast. It's 615-671-9832. Uh, Leave a voicemail. I'd love to hear your voice, uh, your, hear your thoughts. You can remain anonymous. So if you want to call in, it's it's not like you know your number or your name's going to be aired on the on the show here. Your voice, you can use a you can use an alias or you can remain anonymous. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can write into the podcast and that's uh, midgardmusingstn at gmail dot com. Um, and let me know your thoughts about this inner guard, outer guard, inner yard, outer yard sort of thing. How does it apply? Does it apply? Does it work for you in your heathen practices or, or any other practices, not necessarily heathen per se, but just does the concept, does the idea of separation of inner outer have a place for you and why, if you want to divulge and share, would love to hear your thoughts. Check the show notes and description, please, for, for anything else that I share. There are some local events happening in Middle Tennessee uh, some of which are happening within the next couple of weeks. Uh, events that I will be at physically, you know, personally, would love to see you, uh, supporters and folks that, that come out uh, or that, that listen and watch this. If you're in the area, please come out, come say hi. Um, all of those details will be linked down below or in the show notes, wherever it is. I say down below like it's, you know, look down and it's there. On the YouTube videos, yeah, it's down there. Uh, but on the show, on the, on the podcast, it could be here, there. 
anywhere. I don't know. Check it out. Uh, be sure to follow me on all my show. Uh, be sure to follow me on all my socials. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram are the main ones. Of course, YouTube as well. Um, if you have any thoughts you want to share, you can always at me on, on Facebook or Twitter. If you at me on Instagram, I will be less inclined to see it because I don't monitor that platform so well. Um, you can always uh, do a response video or a reaction video or something on, on YouTube if you have a channel. Patreon is another great way to support what I do. Um, it's linked in the show notes uh, in the link tree link that's down there. So just click on that. Follow me on all my socials. Join whatever you want to join. Buy merchandise. There's a merchandise store through Spring. It's a great way to support the channel, support the podcast, because every sale of merchandise, um, you guys get some cool swag. You get some cool things to represent uh, th something that you support, and I get a little bit of a monetary kickback from it. Speaking of monetary kickbacks, I do want to give a special thank you and shout out to my Patreon supporters uh, who come back every month and, and uh, you know pledge their appreciation and their support uh, for here as well as my YouTube channel members that do the same thing. In addition to that, from this last week and a half while my, while my wife and I have been in New York, uh, a lot of you listeners and supporters were very generous in um, helping out monetarily, you know, sending money to my wife and I so that we could, you know, eat, uh, find lodging, um, just the, 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 the sundry th things that, that a person or, or people need uh, when, when tragedy strikes. You, many of you, uh, were, were very generous and, and pull through. Um, so thank you so much for that amount of support. Um, a lot of my nearest and dearest folks of my inner yard you know, really pulled through and helped out. But a lot of you that are not a part of that inner circle, that inner guard, nonetheless still pulled through a lot and, and helped out tremendously. And I, I can't thank you all enough. You know, you, you really helped make the a tough journey less stressful. You really did. Um, so I can't possibly thank everybody, but if you did anything to help in that way, um, I give a very special thank you and salute to you uh, for that layer uh, of help, that, that level of support. Um, your kindness, your generosity, your thoughtfulness will never be forgotten. And I hope and, and wish that uh, whether it's me or somebody else, that in your times of need, um, that you receive the same level of kindness and generosity in return. All right. So thank you all again for, for sticking around and, and coming back and listening and watching this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. If you like it, be sure to upvote uh, whichever platform that you're on this, you know, watching this, listening to this on. Engage with the video, with the, with the episode in any which way. Favorite it, upvote it, like it, share it, comment. Do all the things that the fickle algorithm gods demand in order to keep this relevant and circulated across all the various platforms that it's on. Until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. See you in the next one.